Hello everyone, this is Rollers Winter Bros. And in this video presentation, we're going to show you how to create your own web buttons. It's going to be a quick demo using the GIMP, and we'll show you where to find that. So let us begin. There's a wide variety of web buttons that you can create. However, what we're going to demonstrate is the rounded button, as you can see here. Uh, these are examples of ones that we've created for our various websites. And we'll show you how to quickly create those, and you're just going to be amazed at how quickly it is and how easy it is. Of course, you can create these in Photoshop if you like, but we're going to demonstrate how to use the GIMP to create them. And if you want to download GIMP, the latest version 2.8.18, which we use for this demonstration, is available from www.gimp.org. Uh, you don't have to install it and use it if you don't like. You can use Photoshop if you know how to do it that way. Uh, but uh, we like the GIMP. It, for, it features lots of features just like the Photoshop, Photoshop does and it's a very good application. We suggest that if you use it, you do support it with the donate button uh, because you'll, you're going to find it very, uh, once you get used to it, all the many things you can do for the web or for your artistic creations are just going to be amazing. So here we've pulled up the GAMP and we're just going to show you real quick that we're using the latest version 2.8.18 uh, so you can see that and what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate really quickly how to create these buttons. And so when you install the default configuration for GIMP, uh, all you have to do is when you open it up, you'll go File, Create, Buttons, and then just do Round Button as the first choice. When it comes up, you're going to get this screen. And up here is the text that you want the button to have on it. So we're going to just, well, we kind of like the word Preview. We'll just go ahead and use it. Uh, we're just going to put Preview Product. And we're going to just leave all these defaults so that we can show you how this works. Uh, but if you notice down here in the bottom, there's a not pressed, a not pressed active, and a pressed. And so it's basically going to create three buttons uh, based on all these features, the uh, color settings and sizes that you've choose, chose for the font. Uh, the pressed will be just how it appears on the web page. The not pressed active is where the mouse goes over it if you want to use that feature, like with JavaScript or whatever. And of course, the pressed version would be like if you want them when they click the button for it to have a different appearance. Uh, a couple things also to understand is the, the color schemes. Uh, this upper and lower just uh, provide the different looks for these. And we're going to give you some uh, suggestions on that. Uh, these are different uh, shades of yellow here for the upper colors. And then you can see that the lower colors are the same. And then the, t excuse me, the uh, text colors are different. And that's because you're going to get a different look. So it's real quick. We put in the text box up here what we wanted, which was preview product. It's as simple as now you can adjust all these to your uh, your end desires once you learn how to use this um, the rounded button uh, script. So you just click OK and it'll create the three buttons. And uh, based on that, then it's going to create the three buttons. And uh, if you click on Windows here, you'll see there's three untitled. Uh, items. The first one is the one that you're going to see here, and you might see two other pop-up windows. I'll just go ahead and pull one of them up so you see it. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to stay on this main window. So in this list, the first one is going to be the not pressed version of the button, and you can see it here in the little uh, preview that popped up. And then the second version is going to be the not pressed but active. You'll see it's a little bit lighter. It's like the, if the mouse went over, I'll move back and forth between the two. You can see that it l highlights it a little bit. And of course, the third one's going to be the pressed version. Uh, it's got a downward indentation, and I'll pull those up for you to see them. So, of course, right here, we're actually looking at the uh, not pressed. So, we'll go take a peek at the not pressed active, and you can see if you were on a web page and you moused over that button, you can see it would highlight it. It's a little brighter on the top, and that was from those colors we selected earlier. And then, of course, we'll go look at the third one, which is the pressed. And if you look, it looks like the buttons uh, end in a downwards now. So it's really easy to create the uh, create buttons using the GIMP uh, for your web pages. And uh, a couple things you need to know. Let me go. I'm gonna go ahead and close out these. Oops. Let me go ahead and just uh, go back to the main window. Uh, one thing you need to know is we'll zoom in a bit here. <coughs> is that the size of the button is typically based upon uh, how long the text is going to be, depend on the font you picked and what font size. So the button length is actually going to be dependent on that. So if you want different buttons to be a variety of lengths, we're going to show you real quick how to fix that and some stuff you can use. 
So here we've pulled up uh, a demonstration we were using, and we were creating uh, the names for three different uh, vendors. Uh, the first one being Content Paradise, second one to S3D, and third one being Reader Osri. Uh, Content Paradise by default was longer in the character string, and it turns out it was 16 characters, including the space between the content and paradise words. So what we did was uh, we knew it was 16 characters long. So we played around and we were going to make, we wanted the buttons for Dash 3D and Red Rossity to be the same width as the original button. So we played around and found out that uh, uh, for Dash 3D, we actually, in the, up here in the text uh, box, when we typed the Dash 3D, we put seven spaces before it and seven spaces after it. And it pretty well made the button the same width as it did for the, uh, for the content paradise. And then on just again for Red Rossity, we ended up using four spaces before and four spaces after so that that button would be the same width. And you don't, you can have a varying widths of buttons on your web page, but if you're just going to stack them up and down or maybe left or right and you want to get that uniformity and the symmetry, uh, you'd play around putting some spaces uh, before and after the uh, text up there in the text box and it'll actually, those spaces do count for the width it will create. Now for these buttons, uh, you can see that we uh, had three colors. We used different than the defaults. Here's the three we used for the uh, main button. And you can see here for the active, uh, we basically took what was for the lower color right here and we put it in for the upper color. And we took what up from what was here for the upper cover, color, excuse me, and we put it in for the lower. And uh, that's how we got a, a variety of effects. We didn't actually show the buttons here. Sorry about that. Uh, because the color picker, when it pops up, let me go back real quick to the GIMP and we'll show you about the color picker. So we'll go here and we're going to close all these buttons and we'll start from scratch. And then we'll show you exactly what we're talking about on the color picker. So when we go create a new button, go to buttons, uh, excuse me, round button here. Okay, when you, when you change these colors to what you want, uh, you, you just click on these colors to make them what you want to be for your buttons. And when you click one, the uh, color selection box comes up. Now you can use a variety of options here to pick the colors you want. You can use any of these. Uh, you can change it to like this. And you can see the current will show the current color. Uh, so what we did though is because on ours, we actually included those, uh, the uh, actual uh, hexadecimal notation. Uh, HTML, it says HTML notation here for the actual colors so that you, if you want to use the color schemes, uh, what you do is once you pick your upper and lower colors, if you uh, save those values, then you can do those again without having to uh, remember them or try to find an exact match by using the bar and trying to, you know, get that shading exactly where you want. So you can see here like with in our, uh, what we showed you earlier, we'll just go ahead and type in 409 FFF for that one blue color and we'll just hit enter on it. And you can see it's the current color. That's that uh, light shade of blue that we had on ours earlier. And we'll go back to that in a minute and show you. And then you can just click OK. Uh, and then like here, we're going to make this the dark blue. So we clicked it and the color selector came up. And you can see, of course, the brown matches the brown. And we're going to type in the number for we used for that, which was 004. And these are all, you're going to have to experiment around and get what you like. Uh, you don't have to do everything in dark blue and light blue like we did. But you can see here's the dark blue we picked. So, and uh, you come to what you can remember, here's the black. If you want, uh, just to remember, uh, blacks can be the absence of color, so it'll be all zeros. So if you did have to type it in H, uh, HTML notation or actually hex, it's going to be uh, four zeros, or excuse me, six zeros. Yeah. And if you want all white, which is all colors, it's going to be all Fs. It should be six of those. Let me do that again just to make sure they're right. So, uh, but you can pick any colors you like. Just want to show you the color selector really quick. So let me go back to the uh, other screen and we'll continue our demonstration. So oh, let me go ahead and close it out of the way. Okay, so you can see here we uh, we just picked uh, opposite colors and then we used the text color to be a little bit different for the active versus the uh, the normal, which is that this the top part here is for the not pressed uh, regular and this of course is the not pressed active. So, um, like I said, this uh, we hope you enjoyed this uh, demonstration, and we hope that you can uh, we'll play around with the GIMP, download it, and give it a shot, and create some of your own web buttons and improve your web page look. Have a great day.